I will bring you up here. How do you pronounce your name, my friend? Um, you, uh, it's, uh, can you hear me by the way? I can. Thank you for coming. Hey, thanks. Um, fantastic work. It's, uh, you could just say DJ if you want. DJ's um, in the house. DJ's <laughs> in the house. All right. I got a special thing for you. Hold on. I don't think I've done this one yet. All right. So DJ's in the house. All right. <laughs> I got the well, we'll, all right. All we'll right. Just, That's pretty cool. We'll just, <laughs> it's probably not going to be popular here. One thing I appreciate about like the Catholic or the Orthodox church is that um, you can't be a non-Trinitarian and be part of their church. Right. So they kind of have that perspective down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for the for the Protestant movement, it's kind of hard um, to convince people you got to believe in the Trinity to be a right. believer. Right. So right. what what would be your like, um, you're like, you're pitching the idea of you should believe in the Trinity to be yeah. a Christian. You know, and that's so like, because I've been, I've been asked that question a lot. Like, you know, there's no verse. You know, show me a verse that says you must believe the right. Trinity saved, right? There's no verse, right? Um, so I know that. I recognize that. So the question that I normally will throw back at them, I say, well, we want to follow what Jesus taught. Of course, the answer is going to be yes, right? So what did Jesus teach about the Holy Spirit? That's normally what I get to. I kind of like, who did he teach the Holy Spirit? That's kind of what, that was my preface when I was kind of leading slowly to the conversation with Sean, because that debate that he asked me to come onto his channel was the title was how vital is the Trinity. Right. And if you right. look at the word vital, that literally means the word is essential. So for a high percent of that conversation, we still didn't really get to the actual topic that we were supposed to be addressing. So as I was starting to eventually start asking about who is the Holy spirit, what does Jesus teach? Right. So the question that is to be asked is, do we want to reject what Jesus taught? about himself, about the Father, and about the Holy Spirit. Here's what we right. need to say. If someone does not understand the Trinity, everybody out there in the, out there in the YouTube world, raise your hand if you, understand, if, you, if you understand everything about the Trinity, raise your hand because you're going to be a heretic right now. Okay. Um, oh, I better put my hand down. Right. No, Nobody <laughs> understands everything about the Trinity, right? And a lot of us, there's things that we just don't grasp. What? Well, because we're, we're finite humans we're finite beings right we god is eternal so one of the things that like for example god is 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 love the bible says that god is righteous god is merciful many things that we could read in the bible i don't fully understand all those statements i i believe them right right god's creator of all things i believe that i don't understand i mean you look around you like sometimes during the day this is my little joke right now I'm, I drive for a living. I do lots of driving. I'm seeing people doing stupid stuff all the time. And I'm going, how does God literally know everything that's going on all the time here, much less around the whole world at the same time? That, like, you know, makes my, my hair hurt, right? And so um, there's a lot of things I don't understand, but it doesn't make it not true. So when we're talking about the Trinity, if someone says, I outright reject the Trinity, there's a red flag, right? There's a red flag. Right. Uh, that, that's, that's a caution. There's, there's something wrong. If someone says, you know, I'm open to what the Bible says. I don't maybe grasp it or don't understand it, but I'm open to what the word of God says. Then there's, that's a plus, right? So normally we first start with who is Jesus. That's the typical premise of all of this. Who is Jesus by nature and eternity? And when we can demonstrate that he is distinct from the father, as obviously modalism is false, but at the same time, he is eternal one with the Father, creator of all things, then we can demonstrate that. And then we point to the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is called God in numerous places. He has emotions. He has feelings. He calls people into ministry. Um, he is one with Jesus, one with the Father. He's by nature the same. We point them to those scriptures and say, look, do you want to agree with what the Bible says, yes or no? You got to kind of put it in their court. And, right. and then that's really what I say. So if someone outright rejects, the Trinity. That's where I see the red flag. If someone says, you know what, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again. I'm not completely sure about such and such, but I'm open. Then we just keep on praying for those people. And that's the, that's the importance of discipleship. I've been a Christian since the age of six. I'm now turning actually 52 is tomorrow's my birthday tomorrow. 
Um, so I'm hitting 52. Uh, it's like Indiana Jones says, it's not the age, it's the mileage. Um, been around for a bit, been involved in ministry, been a pastor, been involved with outreach, been involved with homeless ministry, involved with men's ministry, youth ministry, children's ministry, young adults ministry. Just don't put me on the worship team and don't make me your secretary, but I've been involved in other things, right? And one of the things that I've seen over the years, that's a huge thing that's lacking is discipleship. And right. you see these, I, you know, I never learned about like the Trinity right. when, cause right. I grew up in church. Yeah. Nothing from my youth group or from even like growing up in the church. I never taught the idea of the Trinity being important. So and sadly, I'm that's kind of disappointed that's with not, that. That's not uncommon. That's sadly very common. Right. And so the problem is, is a lot of us Christians who are genuine Christians who are going to different types of churches that are Christian, we're not being spiritually fed and discipled as we should be. So when we see the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Muslims or the oneness or the other groups that are out there and they're doing what they're doing, they come across us and then we become like, you know, we, we get turned into a pretzel in a very short amount of time if we're not prepared, right? Right. So a lot of my channel, if you've noticed, I'm not, I mean, there's a lot of great channels out there. Like God's Logic, he's got a lot of good content. I, I've just recently come across him and he's got a lot of good content. And I'm not in any way saying anything bad. Problem with a lot of channels that are out there that have a lot of subscribers and great content, they're just giving information, right? And again, that's not a bad thing. So don't take that the wrong way. But what we also need at the same time is discipleship how to's practical things digging into it slowly and this is where like remember we know jesus says go and make disciples baptize the name of the father son and holy spirit and what does he say teaching them to observe all that i've commanded you so one of the things about being a disciple is we're learning what did jesus teach his disciples right you don't learn it in a day you don't learn it in a week this is time this is something that takes time to become a disciple and so a lot of my channel has been formatted in that kind of way where it's not glamorous. It doesn't have all the whistles and bells that some other channels will, but I'd like to do discipleship. And so that's why I get excited with people like you is because I do this channel for people like you. Well, I definitely appreciate that work. EJ, it was fun having you on here. It was a blast. <laughs> All right. Just for you, buddy. So...